that yes, there is a, that we have made the point that there is scope for uh, improvement in the, or should we say, the reorganization of our public debt portfolio. But an important element which is to, uh, to refinance existing debt, some of the existing debt with longer, ten with longer and cheaper uh, debt. But again, this is a standard operation in terms of uh, reorganizing one's debt. But importantly, um, the dynamics of national debt um, need to be anchored on the fiscal consolidation. And members recently, and indeed at the point of uh, considering various measures uh, that actually will lead to a sort of an improvement in this uh, in this path, meaning by consolidating, by having a lower deficit, as it were, that is the first indicator of the positive dynamics um, beginning to, to emerge. So that is a point we wanted to make. Thirdly, we wanted to make the point that uh, a f fiscal consolidation will have significant policy, positive impact, um, not only on, uh, on the point I mentioned about debt, but also more generally on macro stability, which in particular will allow us to have, a, to, to, to have a less stringent, or should we say, a more accommodative monetary stance. So that is really the point that uh, we wanted to make. In terms of the, the two institutions that are still in receivership, um, we have uh, Chase Bank and also uh, Imperial Bank. With regards to Chase Bank, I think uh, members know that uh, in August last year, um, a, a portion of uh, assets and liabilities were carved out and, uh, and taken over by SBM Bank Kenya. And, uh, and that allowed depositors 75% uh, of uh, their deposits, um, it gave them access to 75% of their deposits in SBM. This, as we have said before, is a first for Kenya. But I think importantly, it provided much needed relief to the depositors. It's true there's still the 25% that still remains in Chase Bank, which remains in receivership. And the idea there is to accelerate as much as we can the recovery of outstanding debt and other assets that, uh, that uh, other assets of CBS so that we can actually provide money or resources to the depositors and indeed other creditors. Finally, on Imperial Bank, the point to make there is that uh, we announced uh, at uh, some time in December that we have uh, an agreement with, uh, or we have, uh, um, yeah, we have accepted the uh, a binding offer from KCB Bank, which would take a portion, again, of deposits and also some assets, which would then allow depositors uh, in Imperial Bank um, a, a portion or access to a portion of their resources. And that now, the, the point also at that point um, was that uh, KCB needed to finalize some due diligence work which will be finalized by the end of March, um, which would then give concrete answers to our amounts and uh, percentages. So that work is ongoing. And finally, as we know, the, the, uh, the depositors did get a disbursement in December, um, amounting to 12.7% of their deposits, um, which now they, I mean, we was provided to them uh, in the period towards the end of last year, early this year. So in a nutshell, those are the main points I wanted to make. Uh, we can, uh, we, we, I am obviously with my team ready to answer any of your questions and uh, look forward to, um, to answering them completely. Thank you very much, dear members. Thank you, Chair. All right, all right, members, members, I know uh, there are a lot of questions, uh, but before uh, we start, I remember that uh, Honorable Mulele had uh, a serious issue, then we will come now to every member, and uh, we will limit 
I will limit uh, at least uh, one one question and very brief so that uh, we move on. Yeah, but uh, before that, I would like us to put into the right perspective first the issue of uh, what we were doing and what the governors understood. I think there is a complete uh, disconnect between the two. Yes, Mushimu Amolel. Let us not take that uh, route of uh, it's too long. But I want to, 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 to ask this way, members. I know the questions you are asking. First, we are, first before, before you ask questions, members, you know there is a disconnect. There is a very, I don't know whether I'm the only one who is saying that the governor has come here believing that we have made the law to actually remove the regulations they have made. But we have made a law to do what? To, re to require that you bring those memos we legalize. So that if countries like Malaysia, for instance, have relied on the memos given by Central Bank, and Kenya chooses to say these memos, we convert them to regulations and you take them to parliament, Kenya will be ranked higher than those countries. Not the other way around you are saying. That is my opinion. M much more then uh, KK, then Dawood. Chairman, you are right. Yes, then Shakir. Chairman, you are right in yes. your observation. But Mr. Chairman, I think the CPK governor uh, uh, appeared before us to give us a lecture. 
And I want to tell him that this committee of parliament consists of members who are well educated on matters finance, economics, and banking. You, we needed not to be lectured on what is happening because uh, that is what I was taught. But my point is this. I have, Mr. Chairman, please give protect, please protect me because I have a right to, to give my views. Mushima Atandi, please do not, uh, do not invite the rap of the members. Chairman, Just uh, go straight to the point. Chairman, my, my question is this. Yes. I yes. want to ask... Alright, your point Chairman, is taken. Let's Chairman, let's thank you, Elder. Chairman, I want to ask the governor. Go straight to the point. Yes. I want to ask the governor two questions. Uh, Mr. Governor, are there existing regulations concerning cash deposits and withdrawals? If they are, where did they come from? Do they have the authority uh, or the force of law for those regulations to operate? And my last question, Mr. Chairman, is because it is very clear that you have refused to implement the law, uh, would I say that, would you, would I, should I not conclude that you are, an obedient, you are not an obedient servant of this country because you are blatant. You are given the law, you refuse to implement, and you are coming to, to tell us that the reason why you did not implement the law is because you thought that if the law is implemented, I then the country will be, will be exposed. This, you is know. Totally, this is totally Chairman, you have, to pro you have to protect me from, uh, from members. This is if you have self-interest in this matter, please come out. But I have my right to represent my, my people. It's a very good meeting. Let us not let us not uh, Chairman, use side shows. Let Chairman, us allow Chairman, let, to let, let members who have self interest in this issue to come out and declare because I am asking questions which I believe are right as a member of this house. Yes, and, and Chairman, would I not therefore conclude that the CBK leadership the, uh, led by the governor is incompetent to serve this country? Let us limit our questions. And I'm asking members, let us be orderly. Let us allow Adam and members to ask in silence. You will have time to, to, to clarify what you want to say. Much more, okay, okay. Mr. Chair, my issue is about the issue of debt management of this country. And when I listen to the presentation of the governor saying that you have a debt of 5.27 trillion shillings, and saying that, that we expect that this would go lower over the years. We're saying that the budget deficit this year will go down by 6.3 percent. And I'm looking at the laws that we passed last year, for example, the finance bill. There were taxes that were proposed that were passed in this house that were supposed to ensure that we collect more revenue as a country so that we, we bridge this deficit. But some of those taxes, for example, the presumptive tax, is yet to be collected. When you tell us that we expect that this, um, uh, we expect to raise more revenues over the years, this has been the same narration that has been done to this assembly. Every time the central bank and treasury comes to make a presentation, we expect that our revenues are going to go, to go higher. However, Mr. Chair, there is no a single time that we have that we that I, that I remember we have accomplished that revenue uh, raising as a country. So. This, therefore, statement by this government, I find it misleading and erroneous that we are going to breach this, this and, and I'm saying that as a youth of this country because we are the one who is inheriting this debt. 56.6% debt of a GDP is unacceptable, and the measures that the central bank governor tells us are going to, to reduce this uh, this debt, I don't think they are workable. All right, yeah. more doubt? in the law or not, it's a good idea. But, uh, Mr. Governor, together with your colleagues who have come here, this law was not just passed overnight. It, it takes a long process and uh, it, it has taken more than a year to go through Parliament. During that time, did you not see it fit to probably make a presentation to Parliament? And after the President has signed it, 
and it says 30 days, you decided to go to the AG at the last minute when within four days, that's on the 26th of October, is when you asked for an opinion from the AG, when you had from the 1st of October to go and ask him. That is one. The second one is, uh, the court stopped it, uh, the civil society, we have mentioned it, went to court on 30th of November. Between 1st of October to 30th of November is 60 days. Did you not find it prudent to come back to the finance committee and probably put your case forward that this is something you are having a challenge with? Second is regarding the Imperial Bank, Chairman, uh, that one I've been asking a long time. How is it prudent to have uh, branches which are closed and are being paid for and staff are being paid and that money will have to come out from the depositors' money? Uh, it doesn't look right at all. It's not that they have a million shillings in their bank at any one time. It is the transactions that they continue and they work <coughs> on a volume of trade. The way it's, we have no problem is what you're doing, it's the way it is being done. And now you see what you're trying to suggest here and I agree with you that if the body itself, if you have a, if you have a growth on your toe and your heart is weak, you cannot have that operation of your toe without affecting the whole body. We accept that, to, that premise that you are putting, but there are other ways of trying to sort this out. You have said that they will do it voluntarily as well. The banks have taken advantage of some of these things and have really harassed not only one ANG, but even us, to get simple money out. The other issue that we have to say to you, that when you have said this, this is voluntarily, how come that Diamond Trust can, and other banks at KCB and others have uh, flouted this, this particular rule and you have said quietly uh, not doing anything about it only for the, D the DPP to come in and take action. On the issue of Imperial Bank, I am going to suggest the same thing, that there are criminals who have taken money and they are shareholders and you know them and they have been with you and they have bribed your own boss, your own branches and your own offices and bribed them silly and you are sitting down and talking to these guys as if they are investors but, and whatever. I am sorry about it but it is a fact. Mr. Shabir, you know as much as, uh, as, much as uh, they, just hold on. You know, as much as your point is good, but uh, let us ensure we use parliamentary language. But this is, I'm saying yeah. bribe is a parliamentary language. No, no, there is a, there is silly. a, there is a word which you silly. use. Silly, I said silly. Yeah. Silly is a parliamentary language. It's not allowed. It's abusive. I will withdraw silly, but listen, All right. bearing yes, yes. in mind. Okay, thank you, Mushima. You have withdrawn. Mushima, I'm born in then Jimmy and when. tells us it is Now these are two institutions which we are entrusted to manage our fiscal and monetary policies. <coughs> Last week, um, the control of budgets, they also stated that we are using 1.2 trillion to service our debts. From other quarters, Treasury, they are saying we are using 700 billion to service our public debts. 
Is it that, uh, Lily, uh, they don't know uh, what is happening, how much we are using uh, to, to service our public debt? Because uh, this country, we are, we are already strained. You can see we, we are facing a lot of cash flow uh, in the economy, but we are not getting the right figures from, 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 from the two institutions. Can the two institutions go and sit down and reconcile the figures and come and tell us, I'm going to tell the public, tell, tell Kenyans, how much are we using to service public debt? Thank you, sir. Much more, Jimmy. And when, yeah, then can hear, then we go back to. And the other staff is going to be, must be assured today, are we mortgaged our institutions and our, our properties for this debt? For example, the Kenya, Kenya Port Authority, or the Kenya Port, Mombasa Port, has it been mortgaged to assess this uh, kind of, of loans? Secondly, you say we are borrowing from abroad Mainly because the interest rate are low. Why are we not borrowing from Japan? Which gives you, which has got in a negative interest rate, if that was our. German. Or even German, which have got negative interest rates. And finally, finally, if we cannot pass you, those people who destroyed the Imperial Bank, we might actually be encouraging the people in the National Bank of Kenya. To go in that direction. Yeah, yes, yes. Much more can DF, and then we give the governor to respond, then we go the next round. Please. Okay, thank you, Chair. Uh, I, I think uh, my, this uh, is also related to the same question, but uh, mine is a little bit uh, different because I want to ask because the central bank governor has been there for the last five years. You have not worked for three years, four years. Why did you wait and give this? Today, you want to reorganize this uh, or uh, the debt of uh, Kenya. Why, why, why did you wait and leave it? All was too late because the economy is almost crumbling. In fact, I had even a heated exchange with the, with the, with the peers' uh, treasurer last week. Uh, that he was telling us that the economy is growing and we are not feeling it, we are not seeing it. In fact, it, that, that is what my question is. I want to hear from you. You are the last bank, bank of last resort in Kenya. You are supposed to be advising even the treasurer not to, to do what they have done to this, to this country because we are almost uh, bankrupt, if I may say it. All right, all right. Uh, Governor, uh, please uh, respond to those questions. But as you respond, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Governor, you know, there is one thing which should be very clear in our mind. And I don't know why you are, whether you are understanding what we are At no point did these members, when they were coming up with the law, say that, you know, we don't want that perception where the parliament will be seen to be fighting the regulations you are doing. We are partners and we are mandated by the constitution to legalize any process which is being done by other Kenyans, including yourself. And therefore, can you put it in the right perspective so that when you are answering, we should be in one understanding that if you have an issue with how it will be implemented, but the understanding should be, we are saying the regulations which you have should be strengthened through statutory instrument act process so that when you are now asking the banks to follow, it is a legal process. We are not saying that, you know, that is why once we understand each other, those lights which you are saying the impact on the economy will not rise. They are null and void because, you know, that is not a intention to remove your regulations. We are helping you to legalize them. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, members. I will respond to your questions. Um, I want to begin with the, a point that maybe I went very quickly over. Uh, right at the beginning, I did make the point that... Uh, we really welcome the, and appreciate the role of the National Assembly. And uh, we do understand that um, in terms of its responsibilities, in terms of how it does business, and really supporting 
our work as well. So I think that point is well taken, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chairman. Um, but I think in terms of the specifics, the, it is true we, we operate and have been operating, as I said also in my opening statement, according to all the laws that are applicable to us. At no time, dear members, did we decide that we will not obey or for that matter, we will not follow through on a particular piece of legislation at no time. If we have issues with a particular thing, we, the specific approach is to go and query it like any other institution. And I think the point is that the, the vehicle there is through the, or the channel is through the attorney general and then through the legal process. That is how we have dealt with it. And dear members, that is how we dealt with this particular um, question that is before us. But in particular, just to, that's the overview, in particular, yes, uh, there was a point that uh, we could have come in earlier when the law was still being discussed. As a matter of fact, we didn't know the law was being discussed. We didn't know. We didn't know. And the time we found out about it is after a, a scent has been has come through and in effect that the thing is about to be implemented. At that point, we have no choice but to implement the law. We have no choice, unfortunately. <coughs> we would have wanted to have had a robust conversation with yours, with yourselves at the beginning while you we are discussing it. Then maybe uh, Chairman the point you are raising about how to help us, we could have told you how we want to be helped better and uh, how did we make our life more, let's say, effective and indeed what are the things that could improve the way we do business. Unfortunately, we are not allowed that, um, that uh, because of the timing. So when it, when it became clear that uh, the law on October had become effective, remember again the timing of the of the amendments in the, that the Finance Act puts forward is defined in the Act as well. There are some that take th uh, three months, others, but this was from October 1. And so at that point, we had no choice but to go ahead with implementing it. And that's when it became very clear that this law contradicted many other uh, laws, and indeed, it, would have, it was impossible. Um, ladies and gentlemen, honorable members, the point is that it was impossible. It is true you can give us a law to implement, but if it is impossible to implement, we cannot implement. In a sense, it is an implementable law. So it is unimplementable. And that is the issue. So no matter how much we try to do it, to implement it, we will fall on our face. And that is really the issue. Now, why did we take our time to go to uh, the Attorney General, um, as was, was asked, why is it that we only wrote to the Attorney General towards uh, on October 26, as I mentioned? In fact, what we did is we went directly to him right after the law, we were aware of the law, meaning we held meetings. I didn't indicate the, the sort of interaction that takes place, and you can imagine that happened from the first week. Um, and that is really the point. But at the end of it, of course, we and we, we've thought of various options that were available then and uh, that could have been available to us. But towards the end of the month, it became clear that the only way forward is formally requesting uh, his opinion and, uh, and then have a legal uh, determination in a particular way. What then happened is we got, the, we got sued, or rather National Assembly got sued, and indeed we were enjoined and the Attorney General got sued in this matter. And therefore, now we are ready to sort of resolve the matters, all aspects, and indeed, we will be <coughs> discussing, and National Assembly has already made its submission um, to the courts, because at the end of the day, the, the courts have a responsibility to determine when there, are this, when there are these differences of law. And frankly, as we all know, the, the courts have in the past had instances where they have actually struck out certain laws that were, that were passed by this House. 
So in that sense, we did what we should have done, which is to appeal to the legal process. And that, I think, is according to um, our, our, the options that are available to us, and indeed also appreciating the responsibility of parliament. As you know, we don't have an option of coming back to parliament directly and sort of having uh, that interaction. But now, of course, as we say, we will have that opportunity indirectly to cover other issues like the ones of uh, refining the law and so forth. But I want to put it categorically that we did not choose to ignore the law. We did not. Honorable members, we did not ignore the law. The law was not implementable. So we did not ignore. We chose right at the beginning to go as fast as we can to implement it. But it became obvious that it was not implementable. Governor, uh, uh, just to interrupt you. You see, this particular law was very specific. It was very specific on regulation or on the memos you have issued to banks to govern deposits and uh, withdrawals, which require certain uh, things to be done, which will help Kenya be ranked among the many good ones who actually vet money coming in and going out. Now, when you con consistently insist that it is not implementable, yet it is very specific that that particular regulation or memo should be legalized by you just copy and paste and bring it to parliament for the purpose of legalizing. So you see, when you continuously insist that it is not implementable, you know we are in the, in the mind of people, they think it's a very big thing, but it is already in the bank. And you are implementing it in the bank, but we are saying bring it through, through yes, bring it through parliament, through the committee on delegated legislation to be legalized per the constitution, because the constitution here under uh, Article 94, 5, prob probably knows so many other bodies outside, including even the one you have purported to have uh, been uh, to have gone to court. As actually, even if you look at the papers, look at the papers they have even given you in your file, they have quoted 94.